All right. Thank you for coming. Uh, I would just like to introduce you real quick. This is my good friend, Kathy Kennebrook. Uh, we've been trying to put this together for a, for a while now and so happy we're actually able to coordinate it for tonight and we welcome everybody. This is, uh, get ready to take some notes. This is pretty exciting stuff. Uh, vacant land gold and uh, Kathy, without further ado, please, uh, please fill us in. All right. Thank you, John. John and I have been working together for a lot of years, and tonight is the first time that we actually are having the opportunity to share a, um, to share my vacant land strategies. And folks, for those of you on the program on on the uh, on the Zoom tonight, I am so glad you are here because you are going to hear about something you probably have not heard about before. Um, these are actually some of the most highly uh, motivated sellers you are ever going to deal with. This is a completely different animal than investing in, in homes and houses, and we do, and I'll tell you a little bit about my background in a minute. Um, it's an excellent stream of income to add to your real estate investing business. You can get started, get involved, buy land, lease land, sell land with very little uh, cash out of pocket or any cash out of pocket, which is absolutely awesome. Um, and then, of course, John, you know that I'm going to be offering them some tools tonight and what I'm also going to offer. So make sure you stay with us all the way to the end, because I'm going to make a very special offer at the end of the call tonight um, for probably the first six folks or so. I'm going to show you how you can invest in my land system at no cost to you whatsoever. So that's huge. So make sure you have a paper and a pen. Um, be ready to take some really good notes. Um, again, Again, this is probably something you have never heard about before. Um, John, we didn't talk about this earlier, but what I would like to do is go ahead and have them put questions in the chat box. And after I'm all done, we'll go ahead and take questions and answer whatever questions they may have. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. So um, let me tell you just a little bit about myself and how I got started in vacant land. Um, I have been investing in real estate for 20 plus years now. And I've been on the road teaching probably for about 15 years um, now. And as a matter of fact, some of you may be my marketing magic students. Um, and this was just kind of an offshoot of my marketing system that I teach all over the country. And, and what happened was um, my husband and I are kayakers. We, we like to kayak. And, and we were spending, I live in, I live on the West Coast of Florida, by the way. And what we were doing was we were taking weekends and we were going up to the northern part of Florida and we were like renting cabins. And so we would be like near the Suwannee River or the Itchnecutucky or the Santa Fe Rivers, um, very three very large areas. And, um, and we would go up there and we would kayak. And then after about like five or six months of doing that, we decided how stupid that sort of was because here we are spending all this money on, on, uh, on cabins like once or twice a month. And so we started looking around and we ended up buying our own piece of land that had a, that had a mobile home on it. And um, so our piece of land was about uh, two and a half, three acres. And um, so it had a mobile home on it. And we started living in that part time. So we had our home down here in Bradenton, Florida. And then our other home is about four hours from here, like right. It's up in the Big Bend, kind of the, the northern part of Florida. And um, and so we started doing that. And then after a while, we went ahead and um, and we built um, and I know John and I have talked about this. We built a log home on our property. So where our home is up there in North Florida is about 85 percent mobile home and about 15 percent stick built. So we went ahead and we built that. <laughs> And, and so that's kind of how we got started. And so our, our inclination was that we were going to go in, close the gate and chill out. And, and, and that was going to be it. And it's a very, very rural area up there. And so we would be like driving around and going different places and there'd be all this land and the land would be going, buy me, buy me, buy me, because real estate investing is an addiction. <laughs> Um, and so that's kind of how we got started in the vacant land business. We started really focusing on some very highly motivated sellers. 
Um, we found that the response rates from the sellers were very, very high, much higher than you will ever see with buying houses. We're talking 8, 8%, 13%, 14% response rates just for mailings. Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, tax certificate investing. We're going to be talking a little bit about buying uh, vacant land at tax deed sales tonight. So we're going to kind of touch on the gambit um, of the various ways that you can find vacant land. But that's how we ended up getting started in vacant land. We started going to some tax certificate sales. We started buying land that way. I developed some really amazing direct mail campaigns and some amazing lists that we use um, to find these really highly motivated sellers. Um, and it's not just me. I've got students all over the country that are having the same kind of response that I do. So I'm really excited that you're here. Um, and I'd like to go ahead and, and kind of get started. That's kind of the, the background. So why should you develop a marketing strategy to find vacant land in the first place? Number one, to get highly motivated vacant land sellers contacting you first. Folks, if you can get these motivated sellers contacting you first, you're going to make some really profitable deals. Number two, to buy land no one knows is for sale, including the sellers. And I tell you, that's the absolute truth. What happens in probably 60% of the cases um, of vacant land that I buy is a situation where the seller has never even seen the piece of vacant land. They inherited it, you know, or, or, or somebody else inherited it and then it came down to them. Um, and so there's a lot of cases where folks have never even seen the piece of vacant land or they bought it, um, you know, they, they intended to maybe, come, you know, let's just take Florida for an example, you know, come down to Florida and build their vacation home or build their retirement home, and that never happened. And so these pieces of vacant land are just sitting out there, and these folks are playing, paying taxes on those pieces of vacant land every year. So really, really profitable deals. We're going to learn, we're going to talk about having strategies and systems in place that will net you profitable land deals. All right, so why direct mail marketing? Well, for those of you who are marketing magic students, you already know the answer to that question, but number one, to get an endless stream of motivated sellers practically begging you to take their vacant land off their hands. And I mean that sincerely. This is not like buying houses. You still can control the number of pieces that are going out and when. Um, you also want to create a response mechanism. Now, write this down because this is huge. Create a response mechanism in the body of your letter that tells the seller what you want them to do and what information that you need. So the deal is pre-screened with all the information that you need when it hits your desk. This is huge and nobody does it but me. You're going to reach sellers who would never learn about you in any other way. Direct mail has no competition, especially in the vacant land market. And you get to turn really small marketing dollars into really big profits. So how do we find like vacant land deals? Number one, direct mail marketing, absolutely tax certificates. And you folks are in the, for those of you who are in Missouri, you are in a tax certificate state. I looked it up before we did the call tonight. Um, tax deed sales are awesome. Websites, um, this is not something that I suggest doing. I'm just giving you it as, as an idea because you're going to pay more if you buy it like from landflip.com or homesandland.com. Those are available, but you're going to pay more for the land. Signage, so you'll see um, yard signs you'll, and, and you know signs in people's, on people's pieces of vacant land. Great way to do some deals, find some deals. Vehicle signage and apparel. Now, for us, vehicle signage and apparel are huge. And I will tell you that if you are in a fairly rural kind of an area or an area where there is a lot of vacant land, don't plan on going anywhere easily and quickly if you're wearing a shirt that says, we buy vacant land. <laughs> How do you think I know that? Um, same thing. I have uh, We have signage on our vehicles that says, we buy houses, notes, and vacant land. Um, so we kind of cover cover the, the whole uh, gambit there. So apparel is really, really effective. 
Newspaper ads. So if you are in a rural kind of an area, there are folks who will list pieces of vacant land in the newspaper. I am currently buying property in three different counties in the northern part of Florida. They are all four hours or more away from us. And so the, the newspaper comes out once a week and we have the newspaper sent to us, mailed to us every week. And so that's just another way for me to find more pieces of vacant land. Craigslist and Facebook are very effective. And then real estate brokers, sometimes you can find a good vacant land deal on MLS. Okay. So those are just a few ideas for you. Give you a second to write those down. All right. And then this is a cool mailer that I like to use. If there's a particular piece of vacant land that I really like, um, and I really want it. This is these are um, uh, mailers that I use. The top one looks like a priority pack, but it's not. These cost about a dollar each, and they cost about a dollar and a quarter to mail. Um, and then you can put like a flat pen in there, or you can put a penny in there, so it makes noise. Um, but these are really uh, effective mailers that we use. The second one says choice uh, choice deal. And so we will put on in there like, you no, know, let, let us make you a let, let us make you a special deal. Let us make you a choice deal on your property. And so these are really effective mailers that we use. Um, and when we start working together tonight, I also will be supplying you with all the resources that you need for mailers and apparel and business cards and signage and all of that good stuff at discounted pricing. So I've got all that handled for you also. So here's some of the target prospects that we like to target when we're looking for vacant land. Number one, out-of-state owners, big time. So an out-of-state owner is going to be somebody who owns a piece of land where you live, but they don't live there full time. And one of the ways you can tell that they don't live there full time is their tax bill is mailed somewhere else. So the property is where you live, tax bill is mailed somewhere else, okay? Um, quit claim deeds. This is another really good mailing. So a property that's been quit claimed from one person to another, that's where I find a lot of my estate properties. When it comes to vacant land, estate properties are huge. Um, very, very profitable. Tax deed sales. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while. Tax certificates, of course. Past due taxes, so like they're past due, but they haven't gone to the tax certificate yet. Um, and those are really, really good deals. Probably 30% of the total deals we buy come from past due taxes. Inherited properties, obviously. Senior landowners, again, these are folks who bought that piece of land. They thought they were going to build on it. They thought they were going to build a vacation home or they thought they were going to retire there. And now they've changed their minds um, and they need to get that piece of property sold. All right. So how do you fund vacant land deals? Well, one of the points that I want to make is that it doesn't take a lot of money to invest in vacant land. And once you do, the money comes back to you really quickly. And I'll show you some specific examples in a couple of minutes. So you can use your own money. You can use your Roth IRA, really good way for you to build the balance in your Roth IRA. Um, John and I were talking a little bit earlier about owner financing pieces of vacant land and leasing pieces of vacant land. And I do both of those things. And putting that money into your Roth IRA is a really good way to grow that Roth IRA. Um, credit cards. Um, you can just throw the piece of land on the credit card, you know, you get a cash advance, pay for your piece of vacant land, and then you'll end up putting the money back pretty quickly. Your 401k, we've bought properties in and out of our 401k quite often. Using private lenders on bigger pieces of properties. One of the biggest pieces of properties that I have right now is 166 acres, and I do have a partner on that property, and um, we actually use that as a, a hunting camp. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then seller financing. You will find more seller financing with vacant land than you will any other kind of deal you'll ever do. So these are some really great ways that make it very easy for you to fund a vacant land deal. So let's talk a little bit about determining land value, because I get that question a lot. How do I figure out what it's worth? 
Number one, talk to local appraisers or realtors in the area. Check with the property assessor's office or appraiser's office, whatever that's called where you live. You can use CoreLogic or RealQuest Express to get comps. You can check price listings in the area for similar pieces of vacant land. How much availability is there? Is there a lot of vacant land available in your area or just a few pieces of vacant land? Um, the, the, the more, um, you know, the more unique the piece of vacant land, uh, the less availability there is, obviously, the more valuable that piece of vacant land becomes. Does it front a main road? That's huge. That adds a lot of value to a piece of vacant land. Um, properties that are on paved road as opposed to dirt road also change the value of the vacant land. It increases it. Okay. What's the income potential of that piece of vacant land? So that's something that you want to be thinking about. What, what can you do with that piece of vacant land? And we'll be talking a little bit about that too. How large is that piece of vacant land? Um, so if, if it's a smaller piece of vacant land, it's something that you might wanna use for something residential. Um, if it's a larger piece of vacant land, you could subdivide it and sell each piece of vacant land, or you can have an engineer come in, subdivide the piece of vacant land, and then sell it as a whole. We've done that, also very profitable. So there's so many opportunities. Does it have utilities or does it have availability to utilities? That's big. That's important. Okay. And then is the land on a pay, on paved road or dirt road? Because if it's on paved road, that will increase the value of that piece of vacant land. All right. So let me show you a couple of deals that we have done. Um, and I'm gonna show you a few because I kind of want to give you an idea of, of the different kinds of deals that you can do. So this, is, this piece of vacant land was partly cleared, as you can see. It's about an acre and a quarter. Um, we paid $1,500 for this piece of vacant land. We ended up selling this on owner financing. Now, this is one of the ones where it was like, talk to the neighbor. So that's a huge way for you to sell pieces of vacant land, talk to the neighbor. What happened here was mom and dad lived next door and the daughter was looking for a piece of vacant land that she could put a mobile home on that was close to mom and dad so she could help them out. Well, how much closer can you get than next door? <laughs> Um, so anyway, so she we paid fifteen hundred. We sold it on owner financing for twelve thousand nine fifty. And when she um, when she gave us the down payment on the land, she gave us a down payment of twenty five hundred dollars, and she paid closing costs. Now I just got all my money back on this piece of vacant land. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. And she's paying us um, eight and a half percent over five years. And our total profit on this will be about 15,000 when everything is said and done. Not a big one, but I'll take it. You know, just like John was talking about earlier that this is just money that's just constant income for you. Okay, so here's another one. We actually bought this. Um, we bought these properties at a tax certificate sale. So it's two acres, it's fenced. It has a power pole, it has septic and well, and we ended up getting this through a tax certificate sale. So there's another picture of it. And then let's talk about the deal. So two acres, fenced, power pole, septic, two concrete pads. So it's got amenities, guys. The more amenities a piece of vacant land has, the more it's worth. We ended up purchasing this from a tax certificate sale, and it was actually four pieces of vacant land that were a half acre each, and they all belonged to family members within the same family. And so the, the, the two acres was actually like pretty, you know, well, rectangular, actually more than square. Um, it was sort of rectangular. So four pieces of, of land, half an acre each. So we ended up paying the past due taxes on these pieces of property for two years. And then at the end of the second, of the, I'm sorry, at the end of the third year, we filed for the tax deed on these, this property. We ended up buying these four pieces of property for a total of $1,600 in past due taxes. Now, when we went to sell them, we ended up with a title glitch. We had one property that needed that we needed to file a quiet title. 
And we did that. So by the time the attorneys got all done, that was $2,300. So we ended up selling this, once that was all done, we ended up selling this as a two acre plot for $26,500. The way I did that was one of the things that I do when I'm selling vacant land is there are in the area where we're selling vacant land and in areas all over the country, you can set up a relationship either with a home builder or a manufactured home builder or a mobile home builder. This actually came from one of my, this was one of the relationships that I have with a manufactured home builder um, up where we, we're selling vacant land. Because what happens is he has lots of manufactured home for sale, but then he's got to find land for them to go on. So what he did, what we do is we send him a list you know, like every month when we have new pieces of vacant land. And what he will do is couple his home with our land, acquire the financing for the buyer, and then we get paid. And that's how this particular one got sold. So um, after everything was said and done, we were in the property for $4,900. We sold it for $26,500. And our total profit on this deal was $22,000. So that's just another deal that we did. Okay. This is a little piece of property that, we, and I mean little, it was a 100 by 200 foot lot in city limits on a paved road, zoned mixed use, which was awesome. It was mostly cleared. Um, it had no well, no septic and no power pole at that particular time. We paid $1,750 for this property because it was in city limits and it was on a main road um, and it was on a paved road. And the thing that was really cool about this particular piece of vacant land was that um, the, the gentleman who ended up leasing it from us, um, this property is about four blocks from one of the major boat ramps in the area. And he was a canoe outpost. He owned a canoe outpost. Hmm, he's got a canoe outpost and I like to kayak. I'm feeling it. OK, so we ended up leasing this piece of property to him. He did put in a power pole or we did and he paid for it. And then he put a metal building on the lot because what he wanted to do was have a place to store canoes, kayaks, life jackets, paddles and things like that. Well, one of the things that was really neat, he ended up leasing the property from us for 15 months at $550 a month. Now, during that entire time, and even now, and this has been like six or eight months ago that this deal happened, um, even now, we still have parks. <laughs> And um, so anytime we need a shuttle, you know, and dropped off at the river and then picked up at the other end, we're getting all of that for free. And that's so cool. And so that was so he leased it for 15 months. That was a total of eighty three hundred dollars. And then we ended up selling it to him for eighty nine hundred dollars. He paid closing costs. We made a total profit on this deal of fifteen thousand four hundred dollars. And we created an awesome relationship for ourselves so that we have somebody to do our shuttling when we're doing kayak trips. So I liked this deal. This was awesome. But are you kind of getting a feel of what I'm talking about? So here's here's where. So on this deal, we paid seventeen hundred and fifty dollars for that piece of land. When he leased the property for 15 months, he paid first, last, um, first and last. So that was um, $1,100 there. So by the time he paid his next month lease, the property was completely paid for. Is this good stuff, guys? I think it is. It just excites me. <laughs> All right. So here's another, um, here's another little piece of land that we did. Let me see if I can actually make heads or tails. This is the letter that the seller sent to us. I'm interested in selling my property by the Swanee River. I bought it in hopes that I might move home someday, but my mom passed away in August, so there's no need to keep it. I want $2,000. I'm not sure what the physical address is, but I can find out for you if you're interested. And this lady's name was uh, Anna. And so what Anna also did was she sent me a copy of the tax bill. So I already had the property ID number and all that good stuff. And so here's this piece of vacant land, half an acre, vacant land, not cleared, nothing, no utilities, nothing. So it was a half an acre, not cleared, no utilities. It was on a private road with shared access. I was kind of glad to sell this one because that's not something I would normally do. <laughs> 
Um, so what I mean is that that's a private road that is has shared access between each person on the road. So the road is actually owned by the people who live there as opposed to the city or the county. Um, not the most comfortable thing for me, but it was such a good deal. And it was in a subdivision. We paid $1,200 for it. I ran an ad in the local newspaper. We sold it for $7,700. Buyer paid the closing costs. We walked away with $6,500 and went, because <laughs> um, the whole thing with private road sharing is not my favorite. All right. Um, here's another one. This was such a cool deal. Um, acre and a quarter, vacant, partly cleared, highway frontage, obviously paved. Um, had a power pole, it had a partial driveway, and the frontage was cleared. So this was purchased from one of my direct mail campaigns. We bought this property for $3,000. Now, what I ended up doing was I used this property for a year for temporary leases. Temporary leases are so much fun. So it was a Christmas tree lot um, when the Super Bowl was here and it was in Tampa and the Buccaneers were the big deal. I'm not a football fan. Um, there was So we had a guy there that had a booth and he was selling Buccaneer apparel and hats and all that good stuff. So he rented it from us. It was a veggie stand, a vegetable stand for a while. So these are temporary leases and they bring their own generators and things like that. They don't need my power or anything like that. So, um, so it had temporary leases on it for a year. And then we ended up selling the property for $18,900. This, the, again, the buyer paid closing costs. I, I, on almost all these vacant land deals, the buyer ends up paying closing costs. Our profit on that was 16,000 and then the profit that we made from all the temporary leases. And there's a picture of that piece of vacant land. The guy who bought it, I forgot to take a picture before I sold it. The guy who bought it is, built, is building a tiny house. So that's what you're seeing back there. But that driveway, the power poles like right there. And then we used all that frontage area for the temporary leases. So that was really cool. So that was a neat piece of land. That was fun. Um, this is one of my students. This is David, and he's in Illinois. He bought a piece of property that was 85 by 120, um, and it was in an urban subdivision, so it was not a rural area. It was more of an urban area. It was zoned single uh, residential home. The value of the property was 18000 It was mostly cleared, had really pretty trees on it. I saw pictures. It was on a paved road. It had no utilities. He paid $3,500 for that piece of land. Um, he did pay closing costs on this, which were $1,500 because it had some past due taxes. Um, and then he just sold it really quick to investor to an investor buddy of his for $14,500, and he ended up making a profit on that in $9,500. So that was kind of cool. So you, you can sell some and we do both. It just depends on how they come. Um, same thing when you're buying a house, your exit strategy is determined kind of when you get it. So it's the same thing with vacant land in that respect. Here's another deal. This is Sarah. Sarah's in South, uh, South Florida, uh, Brevard County. And that's like South Florida. It was not quite a quarter of an acre. It was not cleared. Um, she bought the piece of land for 8,600. The assessed value was 14,000. So she ended up buying that property for 60% of the assessed value. Market value of that piece of land was $38,000. It was in a very hoity-toity subdivision. She sold it for 36 and her net profit on that deal was 27,000. So just really awesome, awesome stuff. So I just kind of wanted to share with you and give you an idea of how the money for your vacant land comes back to you very quickly, even if you're holding it and leasing it or holding it and owner financing. Um, and we do probably half and half. I, we sell some and I like to lease and I like to owner finance because um, it's, it's just a really good way to get additional income coming into your business. So can I buy vacant land anywhere? Absolutely. You just have to structure your business accordingly. So you, a couple of different ways you can do that, because I'm the pieces of land that we're buying typically are about four hours away from us. So you can physically go see the piece of vacant land. So if you're buying, if you're targeting a specific area with direct mail, and now you've got four or five leads that you want to go look at, get in your car and go look. 
um, you know, because now you have multiple pieces. That's one thing. Get your seller to send you photographs of the property if they have them. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, in 50% of the cases of pieces of vacant land I buy, they've never seen it, okay? You can use Google Earth. You can call planning and zoning in that particular county and get information on that piece of vacant land. This is one thing I do a lot. I use a couple of realtors to go look at properties for me. And the way I kind of pay them back is I will list some of the properties that we're going to sell. I will list them with those realtors. And that gives them a motivation to help me out when I need them to go look at a piece of, of property for me. So that's something else that we do. Use a vendor to look at it for you. So if there's like a surveyor that you're using or an engineering company that you're using or someone that you know in that area that can you know, be your, what I call that is boots on the ground. We call it boots on the ground. Um, and so if you can have boots on the ground in a certain area, it makes it a lot easier for you to buy vacant land. And then you can also call the assessor's office and get information about that piece of vacant land. So um, we have absolutely bought pieces of vacant land that we've personally never seen, but I usually get someone's eyeballs on it. Finding the owners of vacant land. Okay, so first of all, the, the, the letter that you mailed. So hopefully they get it. Talk to the neighbors if there are any close by. Check with the utility companies. Um, in more rural areas, they're a lot looser than they are in like more of a city kind of a deal. Um, if you have the name of the person or the property ID number of that property, um, that will help you. Databases, the tax collector's office, you can usually find get a lot of great information about um, the owner from the tax collector's office. Title companies, skip trace services, um, the property assessor's office, Google Earth. Um, if you bring a property up on Google Earth and you click on it, it, there's a little drop down that shows you the person's name and address, usually. Okay. It's not a perfect idea, but it works. Um, planning and zoning, once again. Telephone directory websites, if you have the person's name and the city. And then in rural areas, talk to realtors. Folks in rural areas, the realtors know everything and they know everybody. <laughs> so I'm sure that they'll be able to help you as well. So those are just some ideas for you on finding the owners of vacant land. So this is so cool. John, this is the most amazing strategy that I have ever learned with regard to vacant land. And this changed the way we buy vacant land forever. So how do I get junk buildings removed from a piece of vacant land at no cost to me and get a tax write-off? You want to know how? This is cool, cool stuff. So here's what happened. Um, there was a piece of vacant land next to the piece of vacant land that my house is on. And um, this was before we built our house. And so the guy had two and a half acres that cornered. So my piece and then the piece next door would cause me to have a corner, which is what I wanted. So I wrote the guy a letter every month. When you're ready to sell, I'm ready to buy. I live next door. When you're ready to sell, I'm ready to buy. And after about seven months, he got back in touch with me. And he said, look, I'll sell you the piece of vacant land. I'll sell it to you for $10,000, $1,000 down and $100 a month until it's paid. Is that the kind of motivated seller you want to deal with? Absolutely. That's what it looked like when I got it. Just like that. Ugly. So next to the door, to the left of the door, you see that white, the uh, neck, that next white piece there and the white laying on the ground? That's the toilet. Okay. Um, the thing was falling apart. There was no way we were going to get it on a trailer and trailer it off the property. So I, I started calling around to figure out how we could get this, this piece of junk off of our property. Two and a half acres, gorgeous piece of property. So this one realtor that we knew up there called us and he goes, hey, Kath, I, that's easy stuff. Just go ahead and burn it. I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? He goes, call the fire department. 
and they will do a practice burn. That's how they train the incoming fire people and the EMTs and, and all of that. And so we did that. So we called the fire department and they said, absolutely, we would love to burn your mobile home. And so at that time we were in a burn ban. So we had to wait like three months. And then the fire department called and they said, we've got it scheduled for Saturday morning. We're coming out to do your burn. So Friday night, we came up to our house, which was next door. And um, so that was the, still the mobile home that we were living in. And so we came up and the next morning at like 6 30, 7 o'clock in the morning, there were just kids everywhere. So they start these young people like at high school level and getting them ready to go into the fire department and go into, um, you know, the paramedics and, and all of that. And it, and it was the most amazing thing ever. So they burned it and they burned it some more. <laughs> and that was what it looked like when they were all done. And so what was left was the metal framework of the home that the home sat on. And so we actually called a scrapper and they paid us to come and take it away, which was absolutely amazing. Guys, this changed the way I buy vacant land forever. Okay. So if there's a nasty shed on there or a nasty mobile home or a home that needs to be demoed, I know people down here in, in Bradenton, I mean, we're kind of in a main city area here who have done this with houses where the house needed to be demolished. They had the fire department come out and do a practice burn and burn the house down. So they had a whole lot less to demolish when they were done. And that's what it looks like now. Absolutely gorgeous. So um, now our piece is five acres. And what happened was after this was done, after that was done, we had the two pieces of property, the property that we had, and this piece of property, we had them co-joined. And then we built the log home um, after that, at that point. And we sold the mobile home that was on the property. We sold that and had it removed. And then we built our new home. So that changed the way that we buy vacant land forever. Um, absolutely the most amazing, amazing strategy I have ever learned. So that was a golden nugget for those of you who are interested and who are going to be starting to buy vacant land, or if you already buy vacant land, that is a huge nugget for you. All right, so let's talk about results from direct mail marketing. I kid you not, this is amazing. These are the most highly qualified, motivated sellers you will ever work with. So I will tell you right now, if you're doing direct mail campaigns, don't do big ones. This was 147 pieces that we mailed, 147 mailers that we sent out. 19 leads, 13% response rate. We bought seven pieces of land. We sold three of them and we kept four. We leased four of them. Um, again, what I do with a piece of land depends on how it comes at me. Um, these are the most highly motivated sellers you will ever, ever deal with. The response rates are ridiculous, okay, in a good way. Um, it's just a completely different animal than what you're already accustomed to. All right, so let's talk about selling vacant land. Number one, we always put signage on the piece of vacant land and a piece of advice, put it high up on a tree. If you have, you know, if you have like trees, put it high up on a tree. So when somebody's driving past, they can actually see it. If it's down on the ground and somebody's buying like right driving like a big truck or an SUV, they're not as likely to see your, your, your signage as they will be if it's up on a tree or up on a pole. Listed on Facebook, Trulia, Craigslist, you can list it with a realtor and sell it. You can offer owner financing. You can auction the land. We have done that. You can work with a developer or a home dealer, like I explained earlier. You can list your land on land websites. So some of those websites might be landflip.com. If you have a large piece of land, uh, ranchflip.com. Ranchflip uh, landamerica.com is another one. So those are some websites that you can list vacant land on. Um, so that's another idea for you. Or you can list your land for sale in, in local newspapers. So that's just a few ideas for you. Um, and I do list with realtors, like I said, because I need boots on, on the ground 
um, when I'm not able to get up to where um, where we're buying vacant land. So I will list some with a realtor. We do a lot of owner financing. I like the owner financing um, and, and I've never had one that I've ever had a problem not finishing. As a matter of fact, the last piece of vacant land that I owner financed, um, it was a seven year uh, owner finance and she paid it off in two and a half. One morning I woke up and I went to the post office and there was a letter from a title company with a, with a release of mortgage and a check. It was like, okay, she didn't even tell me she was paying it off. So that was kind of cool. Um, so those are some ideas for selling vacant land. Leasing vacant land strategies. This is so much fun. John and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. Talk to neighbors. Guys, this is huge, especially if you're in a rural kind of an area. So sometimes neighbors need additional land for like pasture, you know, or, or, they, or they want their land to be larger for whatever reason. Um, I was telling John about a deal that I did um, that we, we bought a piece of vacant land and I ended up leasing it to a neighbor and the neighbor had a worm farm and he was grazing agricultural worms. And so he needed additional room to expand his worm farm. And so, and like a dummy, because I don't know anything about worms. And so I said, well, how are you going to dig them out of the ground? I mean, I, how's that going to work? And he's like, no, 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 no. The way that they do that is they have big tubs and tubes that connect the, the, the tubs. So you have tub and then a tube and a tub and a tube. And, and, they, and that's what he, he needed to be able to expand um, his worm farm. So um, he was raising agricultural worms. And then once they're done with the worms, they sell the, the soil for potting soil, which is really amazing. I have learned more about agricultural worms in the last three years than I ever wanted to know. Um, so talk to neighbors. Lots of really good, uh, lots of really, it's a great way for you to, to lease vacant land. Billboard companies, okay? Um, so there are some specific um, regulations with regard to billboards. In the area where I do billboards, they are where I lease to billboard companies. And those are, and now mind you, if you do, if certain of these are short-term leases and some are long-term leases, so you gotta decide what you wanna do. When you lease to a billboard company, that is a long-term lease, okay? Long-term lease. Um, so in our area, they can't have like glass front. They have to be like the vinyl covered. So they're like the backing is wood and the front is a vinyl color cover. They're not allowed to have like a glass cover. They're not allowed to be lit. Um, it's just county ordinances where we are buying uh, vacant land. So um, renting to billboard companies is a fantastic way for you to build really long income streams. Agricultural use. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, agricultural uh, uses for vacant land, storage, cars, boats, trailers, storage units, stuff like that. Parking. I have a piece of land down here in Bradenton. And we have a major stadium here in Bradenton where like the Pittsburgh Pirates and some of the other teams do their spring training and they open up those games to the public and they sell tickets. And, and then and then people got to park somewhere. So we use this piece of vacant land for nothing but parking. We just keep it mowed. That's it. And then and then we park and they have they charge it's 10 bucks a car. And all through the spring and the summer, they have these games like every two weeks. And so it's just another stream of income for us on that particular piece of vacant land. There's so many ideas here, folks. Pasture land. So we had a piece of vacant land um, that a gentleman uh, leased from us and he um, he fenced it in and he was um, he was pasturing goats on the property. So now that it's getting mowed, too, because the goats eat the grass and the grass gets mowed. So that's cool. Urban nurseries. This is neat. I love plants. So I've got an urban nursery on one of our properties. So what urban nurseries do, they don't like plant plants in the ground. They will put up like a greenhouse and then they raise plants in the greenhouse and they sell them. So that's really cool. Camping and glamping. So glamping is like the like tiny house um, buses. I've seen buses. I've seen, you know, like make little like tiny houses with buses. So that's what glamping is. It's something fancy and different, but it's still camping. 
So camping and glamping on your piece of vacant land. Landscape companies, this is cool. Um, we have a landscape company. So sometimes landscape companies need somewhere to store things like railroad ties and, uh, and big boulders for decorative use um, and, and stone things like that. And so we have a piece, you know, and they're not damaging your property in any way. They're not doing anything to it. They're not bringing oils or gases or anything, you know, no environmental problems. This is just really killer stuff, guys. Um, and so the landscape company, that that's what they do. They're just using that piece of van, vacant land to store extra materials um, for landscaping. Pine straw. Um, Pine straw is a little specific, but if you have pieces of property with a lot of pine trees on them, people will come and pay you to pick up all the pine needles that fall. They use pine needles for mulch and furniture, interestingly. You can lease land for crops. Now, I have students, for example, um, in Georgia, and so they're cotton, sod, turf, stuff like that. So that's pretty interesting. So one of the other things that I can suggest to you is take a look at what your demographic is where you live and figure out what kinds of, of strategies there might be for you to, to lease vacant land. Um, okay, let me go back for a second. Um, I when, when we start working together tonight, I actually have 24 different ideas that I go through in detail. We're just kind of touching the surface here tonight um, and tell you exactly how to do this. So for example, I have a student in Texas who has a wind farm. So there's, there's wind farms, there's solar arrays. So that's a bigger piece of property that has to meet some regulatory criteria um, that are very long-term. You're talking 30, 35 year leases on those pieces of property but it's something that you can definitely do. So folks, take a look at your demographic and kind of see what types of deals are available and what sorts of things you might want to do where you live. Increasing the value of a piece of vacant land. Number one, get a survey. If you don't want to get a survey, at least figure out where the markers are. When you buy a piece of vacant land, when you buy a house, if you buy houses, you know this, there are corner markers. Um, and on vacant land, it's the same thing, because when you get ready to lease or sell that piece of vacant land, it's a lot easier for the person to actually like see what they're getting if they can see those corner posts. So either get a survey or, or, or at least find those corner posts. Clear it a little bit. And what I mean by clearing it is, is get rid of some of the under scrub, um, you know, maybe mow the front part of it get rid of, you know, if people are like pitching stuff out the window, like, you know, bags and soda cans and beer bottles and stuff like that, clean all that up. So it's just like curb appeal, like any other piece of property. So clear it in some way so that it looks attractive to the person. As I said earlier, on a larger parcel, you can subdivide. So you can either subdivide and sell the pieces individually, or you can sub use an engineering firm, subdivide the piece of property and sell that piece of property as one large piece of subdivided land. And I've done that. Um, I don't wanna be a builder, <laughs> just not what I want. Change the zoning. Okay, so depending on where you live, this can be incredibly easy. Um, we've changed the zoning simply by making a phone call. To the county. I mean, it's just amazing. So you can take it from like uh, agricultural to residential, residential to mixed use, um, light commercial. And a lot of times they, they won't fight you like on light commercial. So what I mean by light commercial is uh, stuff like, um, like a dental office or an office building. Um, something like that, storage, that's light commercial. So something that's like, you know, like a light commercial kind of thing. And so those are some of the, some of the ways that we use um, and we will change the zoning on a piece of property to make it more lucrative to the person who's going to lease it or buy it. Um, you can also change it to commercial. And I've done that. Um, there is actually a company out there that I work with who, um, builds uh, standalone storefronts. And I won't tell you who they are and I won't tell you what stores they are, but you'd know if I told you, you'd immediately know what I was talking about. 
And what they do, their business plan is so interesting. What they do is they buy the piece of vacant land, then they put a building on it, and then they lease the whole thing to an operator, somebody that's going to operate that business. And they have several different businesses that they do this with, certain specific stores that you see everywhere. Okay, that's as far as I'm going. Um, so we have had some that we have changed from agricultural to commercial. Um, and that for us, that has been fairly easy. Um, so that's something else that you can do. Um, you can add amenities to the property. The more amenities a piece of property has, the more value, valuable it, it becomes. The easiest and cheapest is power. Adding a power pole to a piece of property is the easiest thing that you can do. So that's number one. Um, concrete pad, water, maybe you live where there are, there's gas, uh, propane, um, I don't, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, you know, well or septic. Once you add like well, for example, where we are, it's well septic and power. So if you add well septic and power to a piece of vacant land, you just double what that piece of property was worth, um, at least double to triple, even triple. So, so adding amenities to a piece of property can really increase the value of a piece of vacant land. All right, due diligence. This is important when you're buying vacant land. When we start working together tonight, I go through the due diligence process in detail. Number one, take a look at the land, okay? Is it sand? Is it silt? Um, is, it, is it rocky? Is it hilly? Um, these are things you need to look at. I'm in Florida, it's all flat. <laughs> we ain't got nothing. <laughs> um, what's the current zoning and can you change it? What's the topography of the land? So um, this is where like Google Earth comes in handy. This is where the um, building and zoning can really help you out, you know, just some phone calls. Um, what's the topography of the land? Is it really, I mean, is it like totally rock? You know, can you, can you not get through it? Can you not do anything with it? So it's going to be important to figure out what the topography of the land is. Are there liens or tax obligations on that property? If there are liens and tax obligations, you need to know that, but that can make that property a whole lot more equitable to you when it comes to working with that seller and buying it. Um, I, I've actually had, you know, bought the piece of property and then the taxes were paid, the past due taxes were paid out of whatever money they were supposed to get. So it just depends on how the property comes at. Sometimes we pay the past due taxes. Um, in the area that I am buying vacant land, the average piece of vacant land that has never had a home on it, okay? home Putting a home on it makes a big difference. If a piece of land has never had, like a, if it's just a plain old piece of vacant land, it's never had a home on it, the average yearly taxes on an acre is a hundred bucks. Okay, so it's, it's just so cheap for the most part. Um, what types of utilities are available when you're doing your due diligence? What types of utilities are available? Can you get the utilities that you need to that property? Are there usage restrictions? Is it buildable? Okay, so usage restrictions. Is it in a subdivision where all you can build is a home? Okay, um, some of the, the, the subdivisions that we work in are, are mixed. So some are homes only. Um, I work in one subdivision where you can put a shed on the piece of property and call it home as long as it's 250 square feet or more. Um, we actually bought a piece of property from a lady um, and that was exactly the situation. It was an acre piece of land. She had a 250 square foot tiny home. And I have to tell you, it was adorable. Absolutely adorable. And we've kept that as a lease because tiny homes are a thing. Okay, so we've kept that as that type of a lease. Um, is there access to the land or is it landlocked? Okay, this you really got to know. Now, if the property is landlocked, that doesn't necessarily make it unbuyable. 
Um, sometimes you can do a deal with a neighbor and you can do um, a, a deed, an access deed, which gives you access to your property via a road or, you know, an area where you can, they'll let you like build a road to your property. We bought a piece of landlocked land. I'm not kidding you. I think we bought it for like 40 cents on the dollar. Super, seven acres. And um, it was landlocked. Yay. It backed up to ours. So what we did was we just created the access. Um, and first thing we did was open our back fence. So, so now the piece of land was open to ours because our piece is completely fenced in. And then we did create an access and then I did sell that one later. Um, and we got to pick our neighbor. So that was really cool. But so, 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 so landlocked property doesn't mean you can't buy it. It just means you got to be creative. Can it be subdivided? Okay, we've talked about that. What are neighboring properties like? So there are some properties I've walked away from because there is just junk everywhere. You know, all the properties are just trashed um, and that I won't do. So you've got to use a little due diligence. I actually had a student in Texas who should have known better, bought a piece of property sight unseen, did not do his due diligence at all, closed on the property, went, and he lives in Texas, okay, and the property's in Texas, so it was like four or five hours from where he lived normally, and so he went to the property, and the property was covered with um, tires, the whole property covered with tires, and so we talked about it a little bit and he did some research. And so what he ended up doing, which was so cool, they stacked all the tires and they created walls with them and they brought in dirt and they covered those tires and they created walls and he created an archery range with it, which was absolutely amazing. So he turned a bad one into a really profitable one, but he was very lucky. So don't do that. <laughs> All right, so I know the next question that's burning on your heart is where do I get the list? You know, I get that question a lot. Well, the first thing that you can do is to go to your property assessor's office or the tax collector's office. Great way to get your lists for finding vacant land deals, okay? Tax certificates, past due taxes, out of state owners, quit claim deeds. These are all awesome, awesome lists for you to get now. When we start working together tonight, I also provide the list brokers for you, okay, um, that you can work with to create these lists, no matter where you live across the country and across Canada. So that's just another idea for you. So let's talk about keys to your success or failure when you're buying, selling, and leasing vacant land. Number one, target the right prospects, okay? Um, for those of you who, who buy houses, you know that's really important. You're going to do the same thing with your vacant land business. Make it easy for the sellers to respond to you. Folks, when you are doing mailings to, to uh, owners of vacant land, give them a phone number. Give them a mailing address, give them an email address, give them that website if you have it. The more ways you give a seller to contact you, the more of them are going to because you're going to be reaching them at whatever their comfort level is. Really, really important. Use the right letter and the right language in the letter, okay? So depending on which type of seller you're targeting, the language in the letter is gonna be a little bit different. Use a proven list. Use something that you know is going to work and use a proven system. Folks, don't go out there and try to create this wheel by yourself. This is a different animal than buying a house. Um, vacant land is a completely different animal. Um, I want you to be super, super successful. So I want you to get out there, implement my system, Follow the directions, do your due diligence, and, and, and just do some amazing land deals. Be consistent with your marketing. You can do a little bit or you can do a lot, but be very consistent with what you're doing. Um, once again, also follow up with semi-motivated sellers. The majority of the land deals you're going to buy are going to come from your first to second contact with these sellers. 80% of the case, it's going to come from that first contact. Um, these are the most motivated sellers I've ever dealt with in my whole life. 
So let's talk about response rates from sequential mailings. These are mine and my students throughout the country. First mailings, 8 to 13 percent, I kid you not. Second mailings, 14 to 18 percent or more to the same sellers. Residual is key. However, I will tell you that same thing out of 147 pieces, that response rate to that mailing was huge. OK, so so the response rates are, are really big. I will give you a one warning. If you are doing direct mail campaigns and you're doing the way that I teach them to you to do, do not go out and mail 500 or 1,000 letters at one time. You will get so barraged. You will not know what to do with yourself and you will lose deals simply because you can't handle them. OK, so don't do that. Um, our average mailing on these is 150, 200 pieces max. And I've been doing this for 14 years, okay, with vacant land. You just can't because the response rate is so high. You saw from that the mailing that I showed you earlier. Um, it's just ridiculous. So here's a couple of um, letters from a couple of my students. This is Mike. Mike is in Missouri. I don't know if he's on our call tonight or not. Um, 200 letters, out-of-state vacant land owners, 21 responses, six deals. Folks, it ain't just me. <laughs> um, here's his letter. Just wanted to let you know of my success using your vacant land system. As you know, I got it recently and did my first mailing of 200 letters. I've gotten 21 response, responses so far. I never thought it would be that high. And I've got, I have six land deals under contract. You were right. These sellers are really motivated. I will let you know how it all turns out. This is amazing. Thank you so much, Mike. And he is in Missouri. And I got this email probably two weeks ago, and it was so timely, John. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. All right. So the next question is, do I have to do all the work? Absolutely not. The more quickly you get the minutia out of your lives, the more deals you're going to make. However, these mailings are fairly small. So you're not going to be doing these huge mailings like you would if you were buying a house. So number one, implement targeted direct mail campaigns. Have a part-time person to do the work for you. This could be a stay-at-home mom, could be one of your kids if they're older, high school student, college student, um, somebody in a senior center, lots of easy for you to find folks. Mail the letters. That's the last uh, check that you have to make sure the work got done and start working on the responses and then start processing your deals. Um, you can attend some tax deed sales. And what I suggest is just go the first couple of times and kind of see what's going on, um, you know, kind of check it out. Um, and then you can invest in tax lien certificates. Now, even if you invest in tax lien certificates and you don't get the piece of vacant land, you still eventually get paid on these tax lien certificates and the interest rates are awesome. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a win-win no matter how it turns out. And I explain a lot more about all of that in my system. I have also created relationships with companies who will do all of the work for you. All you do is provide them with the letter and the list, and they do everything else for you. Absolutely amazing. I want to make this as easy as possible for you because it's an absolutely awesome way for you to create another stream of income for your business. All right, so my combined results over the last 12 months, 15% response rate overall, um, 297,000 in land sold, because I don't like selling vacant land all that much, ongoing profits from our leases, ongoing profits on our owner finance properties and so forth. Um, we do sell some, but I really like the whole structure of, of leasing and owner financing vacant land because I like that longer term income. Um, but just depending on how the property came at me is going to make the determination as to whether I keep it or sell it. So I know the next question burning on your heart is, so Kathy, how can I start making the same big profits and income that you do? And how can I get my money back on your system so there's absolutely no cost to me whatsoever? Um, well, let me just show you one more letter really quick, and then I'm going to tell you how to do that. 
Um, this is Ted. Ted's in Delaware. Hey, Kathy, just wanted to send you a quick update to uh, update you on my progress since implementing your vacant land system. I was so glad to be one of your students with this system since I'm already a marketing magic student as well. I can't believe how much momentum is going already. I have gotten 15 responses in the last two weeks and I have written three offers. Uh, I'm sorry, I've written offers on three of those so far and two of those contracts have already come back signed from those sellers. This is cool stuff, folks. Thank you for putting together such an amazing system and thank you for answering all of my question. Your system is going to increase my bottom line in a serious way. Here's one more. I got your vacant land system a couple of months ago and I decided to try it out. This is Jeff, he's here in Florida. Thank you for the quick start guide, that was super helpful. I sent out my first mailing of 100 letters and got a vacant lot under contract for $1,000. The owner had passed away and the heirs live out of state. They were tired of paying taxes on it. I decided to flip this one to another investor that I know for 6,500. Not a huge profit, but for a hundred letters and about a half an hour of my time, I'm good. I'm ready to do some more deals. Thank you so much, Jeff, and Jeff is in Florida. So what I want you to do is go ahead and uh, while we're going through all this, go over to john.vacantlandgold.com, John dot vacantlandgold.com and take a look at the system. You'll see everything that's included in there. And then I'm going to cover here for you what you're going to learn and all of that. And so take a peek at that while I'm doing this. Um, so what you're going to learn, first of all, how to get an endless stream of motivated sellers begging you to buy their land. And I really kid you not, that's the truth of it. Have deals pre-screened when you get the, the, the responses from the sellers. Most of the sellers I deal with, when, the, when their response hits my desk, I've already got most of the information I need. 90% of these sellers do not pick up a phone and call me. They will either email or mail me their responses. Why is that? Because that's what I want them to do. How to increase, you're going to learn how to increase the value of a piece of vacant land. You're going to work, learn 12 ingenious ways to sell vacant land, 24 creative ways to lease vacant land, how to do deals with tax liens and tax deeds. And I go through all of this in detail, how to find the sellers who don't want to be found, how to automate your system and get it into somebody else's hand, how to physically find a piece of vacant land. Folks, this is important. If a piece of vacant land has never had a house on it, it doesn't have an address. It has a property ID number, but it doesn't have an address. So I teach you exactly how to read that property ID number and hone in and find that piece of vacant land. So I've included all of that in there for you. So complete step-by-step -step direct, uh, direct mail campaigns how to com uh, complete directions to automate the whole system and get it into someone else's hands. The quick start guide, everybody has just been so excited about this, the quick start guide. So it's like, you gotta do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, but you gotta read the rest of the manual too. All of the forms are on USB. Folks, this includes everything, the contracts, the evaluation sheets, the letters, the letter of intent, the disclosures, it's all there in the system. This is a complete system for you, okay, to start doing vacant land deals. The resource kit is on USB. In the resource kit, you will find um, the companies to do the mailings for you, how to get the lists, all of that, how to get your apparel, discounted pricing on, on apparel and signage and business cards, all of that stuff. So all of that is on your resource kit and that is also on USB. How to buy tax certificates and tax deeds. Okay, so all of that is in there. Your investment in my system tonight is going to be only $1,597. However, John kind of beat me up a little bit in the last week or so. And so we're going to offer you folks um, a special discount tonight only for the first six motivated investors who take action right now, um, making your total investment only $1,197. And I'm also going to tell you how to own the system at no cost to you whatsoever. I'm also going to include over $5,200 in bonuses for those first six folks who take action right now. 
So go to john.vacantlandgold.com. john.vacantlandgold.com. The whole order is laid out for you. If your order goes through, you are one of the first six people. So go ahead and grab your set while we're going through everything else. All right. So um, here are the bonuses. The first bonus is that million dollar resource kit. It's a $497 value. In my personal opinion, it's absolutely priceless because this is where you're going to find all the information that you need as far as your list brokers and as far as your all of your signage and um, all of the things that you need for your vacant land business, um, all of that. And I uh, arranged discounted pricing for you on all of it. So the list brokers, the companies to do the mailings, um, all of the, all of your, like I said, your, your, your business cards and your apparel and your signage, all of that stuff. All right. There is, you are going to receive a consulting certificate with me, folks. This is huge. You have one full year to work with me directly by email to answer any question that you may have regarding your vacant land marketing. And you will receive my personal email address. I'm one of the only gurus in the country that offers this kind of support to my students because I want you to be super successful. I will work with you step by step on any question that you might have when you are marketing to either buy or sell vacant land. That's a $4,500 value by itself. I am, I am limiting it to the first six folks tonight. Um, because I don't like to overfill my support. Um, I'm very fast answering questions. They call me the fastest guru in the north, south, east, and west. Um, I usually answer your, your questions within a couple of hours, so I'm, I'm really, really quick about that. Um, there's also an entitlement certificate. You are going to receive a 30-minute consultation with my personal CPA. Feel free to ask him any question that you might have about your vacant land business, about your house business, about any other business that you may have. Um, this is my personal CPA. He is a financial planner. He is a real estate investor of over 40 years. The man is absolutely brilliant. He is one of 12 in the country who is also admitted to practice before the U.S. tax court. So the man is scary, scary smart. This is a $250 value. He does limit the number of these I'm allowed to have for each event that I do. So these are also available to the first six folks tonight. So that's an awesome bonus. Folks, I offer a 10-day free look enrollment plan. Give us a deposit tonight of $1,197. And if my system isn't every single thing that I told you it was going to be, you have a full 10 days to get it back to us. Um, your product will leave tomorrow via USPS priority mail, um, so you will have it in your hands very quickly, which is important to me um, because I don't want you to like stick it on a shelf. I want you to open up. I want you to use it, implement it, and start making some amazing profits on vacant land deals. Now, how many folks in our listening audience tonight would take my system if it was absolutely free? John, do you think anybody would do that? Um, they, there may be a couple. A couple. Okay. Here's what I am going to offer, folks. I'm also the only guru in the country who does this on the vacant land uh, system. I am going to offer you an incentive rebate. Folks, when you do a deal using my direct mail campaigns within the next 12 months or a tax deed sale, okay? So you have 12 months to get this done. You have no excuse, none whatsoever. Send me a copy of your testimonial letter, proof that you did the deal, and a copy of your profit check, and I will refund your entire investment of $1,197, and you get to keep the system and all of the bonuses. Why would I do that? A couple of reasons. Um, number one, this is the best way that I know to motivate you to get started. If someone had offered me years ago when I started investing in houses, to get out there, do what I was supposed to do, which was to market, to get my next deal coming in and then give me my money back to do that, I'd have jumped on that in a heartbeat. 
So that's one of the reasons that I do it. I hate seeing people take a great system with really good information and put it on a shelf and never look at it again. So that's the main reason that I do this. It's also the main reason that I'm only going to offer six of these incentive rebates because I know my system works. Um, we've already written quite a few checks. Um, and so all of the letters that, that I showed you earlier tonight, all of those folks have done deals um, and gotten their rebates. So that's really, really amazing to me. So folks, take action right now. You need to be one of the first six folks to take action right now. You will get my vacant land system. You will get all of the discounts and bonuses valued at over $6,000 and the rebate certificate. Folks, go to john.vacantlandgold.com. If you have other questions, our office will be open for a little while. Um, the phone number is 941-792-5390. If you get the machine, leave a message and we will call you back in the order that the call came in. So go to john.vacantlandgold.com and get your system ordered, or you can call our office. Don't call us yet. I have my phone disconnected next to me. <laughs> This is a, it's it's our office line. So give us a call like in 15 minutes or so, 941-792-5390 if you have any questions. But please go to john.vacantlandgold.com and get your order in so you are one of those first six people. Um, so John, did we have any questions or what can I do to help? Leave the... Uh... <laughs> The, what you the investment you've knocked off another four hundred dollars, which just kind of blew me away right there. Well, um, the other part of it is because you and I work together a lot, and and I really love your folks, and, and I didn't have to get on an airplane or any of that. <laughs> you know, so I rather pass that savings on to our folks on the call tonight. Well, that's just not, that's unbelievable. Um, just uh, we really appreciate that because um, I know <clears throat> you're talking right up my alley. This is the this is the stuff that I think is is definitely gold right here. This is worth more than gold um, as far as I'm concerned. And the way you do it, Kathy, is just it's unbelievable. So and there's uh, so much more. Like when I I mean I teach whole day whole days on, on the vacant land investing. We just touched touch the tip of the iceberg. Right. But the system is really complete. I mean, we I covered everything in detail and step by step so they know exactly what to do to get their next land deal done. Un unbelievable. We do have a couple of questions here. Okay. Um, Carlos, <clears throat> he's from, uh, I don't know if he's still with us. I think he's still here. He's from uh, Guatemala. And um, he wanted to know... Uh, is there a way to send those box mailers if he's not in the U.S., like maybe a third party service or that, or someone that does it? Do you know of? I would think so. Yeah. OK, I'm not positive, but I would I would think so. Yeah. OK, well, maybe. Yeah, maybe we could network and find that for him, because I know Absolutely. he does a lot of stuff and he's very motivated. He's a very good, a very good guy and a very good investor. Um, and those little mailers are really effective. They really and, are. So if, I mean, but again, they cost a buck a piece and it's a buck and a quarter to mail. However, if there's a group of pieces of vacant land that I really want, I have no problem with it. You know, what, if I sell, if I, if I mail out 30 of those and I get one or two deals that paid for it, like a long paid for it. So the investment's totally worth it. But it's just, it's just brilliant the way you have that set up. I love it. Yep. And uh, Trace, Tracy was asking uh, how much time passed uh, from purchase to sale. Um, yeah, I guess that those could vary, but is there a certain time that you uh, can expect out of that, Kathy? It'll probably vary some um, based on the part of the country that you might be in. And then um, in the beginning, it might take a little bit longer because we, we want to... Uh, we want to make sure that they get like set up in a way that, you know, for, so for example, if they're using a realtor, then the, then the property is going to sell a lot more quickly and that's not a problem. So once they kind of get their feet on the ground and they kind of get moving and get a feel for their business, then the time from purchase a property to sale a property is very short. Mm. Um, but there is a little bit of time to getting set up and getting things in place. So I would say probably, in the, I mean, look at some of the student letters that we looked at tonight. Um, I would say probably 45 days would be reasonable in the beginning. And then once you kind of get really into what you're doing, it won't take that long. Okay. So wow. for example, like for, for me, um, I set up the, so just as an example, I set up the relationship with the mobile home and the manufactured home 
developers. So I send them lists constantly and they sell my pieces of vacant land very quickly. So that's what I'm talking about, getting your getting your 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 vendors in place. And, and the more quickly you do that, the more quickly you'll sell your properties. OK, any more questions? That's uh, I tell you, it's just uh, unbelievable the way you do that. I just love that, Kathy. You've just simplified you know, so much that people make complicated, you know, so complicated. And personally, I think this is the way to go as far as any, even if you're already a landlord or, uh, or whatever you do in investments, this, this to me is the, the best money I've ever, that I've ever had. Is, is right here. I do see another question here, Carlos mm -hmm. Marquin. Um, also curious about the response rate. I've sent some mailers and, and John, this is the, this is the response. This is the response I get all the time. I love it. Um, I've sent some mailers, regular white envelopes since January of 2023, but my response rate is nowhere near yours. Could it be the kind of letter or may, maybe to a competitive area? It's the letter, it's the list, it's the language, it's the response mechanism in the letter. Those are the four things. If your mailings are set up correctly to start with, and you are honing your list. The thing that we do when we are doing mailers, we are honing in. So for example, if, if you're mailing to, um, to, to a past due tax, uh, tax bill, for example, um, and then there are some things that we do to hone that in even further. We stack our mailings. So we basically you know, use specific criteria to hone in either, even further to reach the most highly um, motivated sellers in each group. And that's what brings that, that response rate so high. And, and it doesn't matter if it's houses or vacant land, we have done it the, the, same, the same way for years and years and years, and it absolutely works. Um, are you referring to land real estate agents? Generally, these real estate agents sell houses and land. So that they generally do both mobile homes, land, whatever. Most of the realtors that we work with do it all because most of the real, the realtors I work with are in a rural area. And so this, the, the realtors in a rural area are going to work with whatever property types of properties are in that area. There may be vacant land specialists. I would absolutely check your demographic and see what that looks like for you. Okay, and that's everybody as far as questions. Anybody else? I'm here. Um, and that's another thing that, John, I really appreciate you having me on the call tonight. Um, anytime I can get out there and share with folks and share the, 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 all of the attributes of buying, selling, and leasing vacant land, there are other folks out there who, do, who sell like quick flip type, you know, quick flip your vacant land for big profit kind of stuff. And there's just so much more money to be made in these short and long-term leases and owner financing and stuff like that. And so we do both, but I want you to have the opportunity to do whatever kind of deals that you want to do. Um, and again, my system covers everything in detail. I mean, real deal detail. You know, here's A, B, C, D, E. That's what you need to do to do this deal, to do this deal, to do this deal. Yeah, here's here's another question. Ron was asking, how much do you need for a monthly uh, budget? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Land is a completely different animal. Um, again, depends on your demographic, depends on how many deals that you want to do. But I'll tell you straight up front, honest to goodness, I really don't want you doing more than like 200 mailers a month. So as far as the, the, the marketing to get the deals um, you're going to run some ads in rural newspapers. You're going to put out some signage. You're going to use some business cards. You're going to contact realtors. You're going to do some mailings. Uh, you may go to some tax certificate sales, things like that. Um, so, so the investment is just not that big. Um, and then if you do invest in a piece of vacant land, as I showed you earlier, the money comes back to you really quickly. And that's what's so unique about the vacant land business. And that's what I really liked about it from the beginning. That it question wise for the moment? I think that's it on the question. The link was not working. Um, 
do we need to put in the W W first or anything like that? Uh, should John? It should be John dot vacant land gold dot com. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I was gonna say, hold on, let me try. I've got my phone sitting right here. Hold on a second. Okay. Yeah, I know I had a, I had a little bit of trouble with it last night, but it, it worked for me. So <clears throat> I didn't know what I did, but we'll we'll get that link working here. Hold on. Went right to it. I just put in all I put in was John dot vacant land. Here's here's my phone, and there it is. It went right to it. All no www dot john dot vacant land gold dot com is what I put in, and it took me right to the page. Okay. And Thanks. that's on my phone. All righty. Mm -hmm. it's, it's working. Great. Any other questions? I'll tell you, you've simplified it so much. It's uh, just, um, I just love the way you've done this, Kaylee. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> it's brilliant. I really like vacant land. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this, okay, two people are saying link works. Three people. Yes, it works. Yeah. No, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's working fine. Yeah, it works fine. Must have typed somebody must have typed it in wrong, so it's but fine. It. Yeah, it's John dot vacant land gold dot com. Very good. Yeah, I'll and I'll send out a link and just a follow up link too for anybody. Uh, you cool. know, after afterwards here with uh, once we get the uh, if if you're willing to share our replay too. I know we kind of talked about that, but I don't think we got a final okay. If you're willing to share that, I'll go ahead and and get that back up. Cause I tell you, I couldn't take notes quick enough, Kathy, you've come up with so many brilliant ideas. I can't wait to burn a building and <laughs> have that done. <laughs> and, and honestly, and here's the deal. Okay. So, and I may not have covered that as completely as I could. So what happens is, um, so you burn, you burn, whatever it is, the pe the, the, the land or the, or the, the building or the mobile home or whatever it is. And then it becomes a tax deduction because it's a donation. So that is huge. And, and I have to tell you, um, when they were all done, it took them about 10 hours from start to end because they had to wait and make sure that there wasn't anything that was smoldering or anything like that, you know, embers, that sort of thing. And so it was, they were there about 10 hours. It was like 637 in the morning and it was probably five o'clock by the time we got done. And um, and we watched and it was amazing because there were so many young people, I mean, really 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, and they had like ambulances and they had the, the fire trucks and, and all these young people. And then all like the regular fire people, because they're always training them and their equipment and everything. And um, and so when it was all said and done, they said, oh, no, 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 there's no charge for this because I, I wrote them. A, we wrote them a check. Oh, and I said, oh, no, no, this this check is is for your program, because this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And, and then and you so got the scrap people to come and get the metal. That's just that's another just a brilliant tip right there. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And then this I mean, you know, because the, the scrap pay, people paid us a minimal amount. But all I wanted, it was gone. You know, I didn't care if I got any money or not. I just want it gone. But what and what they do is they take the scrap to scrap yard or whatever and get paid by the pound. And the frame of a home is quite heavy. That's great. <laughs> I love, it. Yeah, <laughs> I love and, it. And and that was a that was a technique I learned early on from one of the realtors that I actually work with in one of the very rural communities. So I can tell you that as you start getting your vacant land business going, start talking to vendors in the air, you know, to the appraisers and to surveyors and to realtors. You will learn a ton about your demographic just by talking to people. It's amazing. And that's how we figured out that particular technique. And we've used it several times since then. It's just that was my piece of land and that's my favorite one. So that was the one that I like to show when I when I when I do these um presentations, but we've used that technique. We've actually used it on houses where we've bought condemned houses, had the fire department come out and burn them, taken the tax deduction for it, and then build another house. Wow. I love it. I wish I would have known that uh, years ago. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it <would> be both. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, I brilliant. think we have just maybe two more left. So if you want your, you, you need to get it tonight, john.vacantlandgold.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you were recording this. So you were going to put it back up for them to listen to, right? Yeah. I'll send out a replay to, uh, to yeah, I know so a couple people had some take more notes and, and get, you know, a better idea and, and all of that. So absolutely. Thank you. Off awfully fast. Yeah. Um, and, and that was just a drop in the bucket tonight. I mean, I, I do whole days on, on this topic and it's awesome. I love it. I love I love that so much better than my houses. I'll tell you, this is just right here. I don't know why everybody doesn't add this to their toolbox. 
Oh, no. And honestly, folks, what I was telling John earlier before we got started, I live in Florida. And so, and we have a bunch of rentals. I mean, I have lease options. I have rentals, you know, on, every, on top of everything else that we do. And every time a hurricane comes through, my heart is in my throat. And then with the vacant land, it's like, oh, darn, we lost another tree. Oh, well, <laughs> it's just such a different animal, you know? Mm -hmm. Just more parking spots. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love that that you that you rent it out for parking too. That's just something that um, I didn't think of, but it's just brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's just and right. it's just it's just a little piece of land. It's not like a huge piece. It's in a it's in a residential neighborhood, and I'm not the only one that does it. Um, there's a couple there's a couple small businesses. It's sort of a mixed use. So there's like there's like houses, and then there's small businesses, and then there's a couple of pieces of vacant land. It's sort of like mixed, and and so we keep that one piece specifically for that because it's and we've been doing that about five years now with the parking and we just keep it you know my guy comes out and mows like once a month and it's not a huge piece of land mm -hmm. um and then we we park about uh between 20 and 25 cars nice. and, and every time there's a game that's what we do all summer from like now mm -hmm. um we started about a month ago so from about now to like the beginning part of the summer june or july and and we will do that continuously i love it yeah love it mm -hmm. yep well, that's great. They, I appreciate so much you sharing all this with us, Kathy. This is, uh, like I said, this is right up my alley. I, I think I this is great. And I know a lot of uh, a lot of people on here just really appreciate the all the tips and everything. And uh, if you're if you're on the fence at all about this, I would just do it. I mean, can't I, I can't believe you're actually giving a, a rebate for somebody uh, and giving them twelve months to do this. I mean, right off the bat, just the discount you've done because I know what goes into this and what you've done and the money that's that's made. I mean, this is like the best kept secret out there as far as i know of any investing i i know of i mean nobody, gold, this is better than gold coins yeah nobody no. else in the country does this mm -hmm. but me i'm the only one um you know like i said there are some other folks that teach buying and flipping vacant land but the long-term aspect yes. is phenomenal there's just so much we literally touch the tip of the iceberg tonight there are so many amazing opportunities and my students send me stuff like my students in Georgia I just um, you know I just learned about turf and cotton and things like that and um, that's something else folks when you invest in my system any time that there's any updates or anything that I learned that's new and different I do I do newsletters to all of you and let you know hey here's a new technique here's a new vendor here's a new list broker you know and so I do that and I send them newsletter so that they're kept up to date just like I am with anything new that I learn or find. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. I so much appreciate this, Kathy. You just uh well I appreciate you having me on the call again. This is awesome. This is great. Yes. Anyway. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any, anybody else have any questions? I know we've taken a lot of your time, Kathy. You're on oh, a different right. different time zone, but we appreciate it very much. Yeah, we are in a different time zone. That's true tonight. Uh, yeah, we got people from California and I know all over the other parts of the country here too that I know of tonight. So Yep. Yeah. Well, I did a bunch of marketing for it too, because I, I love the opportunity even for my own students to be able to to hear about the vacant land and hear a longer presentation. So um so I marketed to to a lot of my own students as well. And then we both marketed all over the country and stuff. So yeah, we have quite a few different folks on tonight, not just your area. Mm-hmm. Well, this is something something that's so nice because there's vacant land everywhere. I mean, exactly. this is, yeah. and, and like you said, your due diligence, you know, that's something you need to pay a little bit of att attention to. But I love the way you talked about the guy in Texas that didn't even look at it with, I, you know, the archery range. That's just another thing that's, you know, being creative is, uh, you know, that's just so huge on everything because a lot of people, you know, they say, well, you don't got to think outside of the box. Well, what if you just don't have a box to begin with and you create your own box? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And that's what you're doing right there. So I love it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, thank you for having me on. And thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us tonight. We still have a bunch of people on the call. That's absolutely awesome. Um, yep. Again, you can see what an important topic this is and, and how unusual it is, um, mm -hmm. because there's just simply not a bunch of people doing it. There's It's just something really different. So it, it's, it's tops in my in my book. I'll tell you, it's as good as it gets. I love this. Well, I and I thank you for having me on and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with your folks. And I thank everybody who came on the call and shared with us tonight, because um, this is 
it's just a really good additional stream of income for your business. Mm -hmm. Just so. All right, sir. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks again. I can't thank you enough. Um, I will go ahead and once, once the rendition gets done tonight, I'll with your sure. permission, I'll go ahead and get the replay sent out. And um, yeah, if uh, you know, we, we network tomorrow, so I, I should have it uh, ready for our, our call in the morning. So I'll go ahead and send it out because I know some of the folks couldn't make it tonight because they had, pro, you know, previous uh, commitments. So uh, and they were asking me, I got I got a few emails just even last minute today. So thank you for uh, sharing that with us and allowing us to share the replay. All right, terrific. All right. Good night, everybody. All right. Thanks again. All right. Bye.